target, who the fuck the shit out of you? Even though your worst days, girl, you still kinda cute. If it go down, I'm gon' protect you, pull that stick out and shoot. All I want is your love, can't see no bitch out to you. On promotion, we did things that we did have to do. Tell her you leaving out so lies when you out for the few. I second guess if you the one, it's when I die, I will cool. Every Martin and Gina, but we ain't think about behind the scenes. The way I kill it, lose our voice when she trying to scream. We from the trenches, we moved on to the finer things. Now you don't want from h and to a designer fiend. He was playing games, got you dancing in the middle of the club. Got you dancing in the middle of the club. I know what you chasing, you can only get this feeling from a thug. You can only get this feeling from a thug. Tears falling and it's licking your cup. Whoa. That was not a good result for us last week. Fell short in the predictions. The betting tips were just completely off. Missed the target. Yeah, I gotta reconsider. I gotta think about the way that I'm tape studying, the way that I'm betting, fights I'm skipping, fights I'm not skipping. Yo, Alvarez, you know, I knew that was a shot in the dark. The value was there. Alvarez was upsetting people back to back, you know what I mean? And I figured, look, if he was able to dispatch of Moises in that way, he could give uh, Sarukian a problem. And I was completely wrong. Sarukian dominated him, showing once again that he is worth the hype. I was fucking doing something, and then when I turned the TV on, it was already halfway through round one, and Yoel was on his back. I should have just cashed out straight away, but I kept it in because I thought, look, Yoel might be able to get a submission, might be able to pull something off, but as soon as he got cut at that elbow, it was over, man. It was over. That was a miss. Um, I bet low, rightfully so. I just needed to cash out. That was more greed than anything. Wellington Terman and Serkanov, that was just really unlucky, man. I didn't know Wellington Terman was that high level off his back, you know what I mean? Like, that armbar was sleek, it was quick, it was sharp. He tapped straight away, that's how lethal that armbar was. This is just a fucking greedy play by me, man. This is literally just betting for the sake of betting and that's so stupid when you do that you lose money in the long term so for all light heavyweights and heavier they will not see a punt from me and if you ever see me putting money on someone that heavy call me out on that shit because i'm no longer in that business anymore it's going to be middleweights and less uh main event i really didn't expect islam to come out that hard he's normally a lot more patient composed tries to break guys down a little bit slower didn't expect him to rush in for a double leg like that so that was a straight up statement to show everyone like look I'm well overdue for a title shot, man. I'm just too good for these guys. They're not on my level. For me to put 10 grand on that, it was just stupid. It's just stupid. I mean, hindsight 2020, but a fight where you have one of the best prospects in the history of the sport, probably best not to do that, man. Look, I, I made a lot of mistakes. I think a lot of it has to do with just me getting too comfortable. You know, I'm sitting on 100 grand that I've won from gambling. Play with it, but you know, I fucking worked hard for that money, man. I'm reversing all of my progress by making stupid, rash decisions like this. So I'm going to go ahead and take time off here. You know, this card, I'm not going to bet. When I come off back-to-back -back losses, which I haven't in a long time, I need to reconsider if I ever lose twice in a row I have to take the week off and consider what the fuck am I doing you know what I mean like I'm getting so busy with work right now barely having enough time to post these videos out I mean the only reason I got this video out so quick is because I need to make myself accountable I need to put it in the books straight away like this is what I'm going to do to improve me releasing the Islam Green video literally 12 hours or less before the event started that just goes to show man I'm fucking too busy right now man. at the end of the day I did do the tape study but did I delve into it deep enough that G U and Kim fight I fucking broke that fight down to a T, bro. I said I thought, you know, Kim would be the more technical fighter, probably land more, but Cachoeira's style, she's gonna get a robbery win, and that's what happened. I seem to be betting on the wrong fights. I seem to be betting on fights I think is worthy, skipping fights that are, I think are too risky, and then I get those fights right. So it's like, I, I really need to take the week off, consider my approach, and uh, regain that confidence. I can't confidently sit here and give you betting tips when I'm losing back to back. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement, man. Let's let's move into this next card. Opening the main card, we got Sergey Spivak versus Greg Hardy. Two of the larger heavyweights in the division very tall long rangy guy kind of lanky excellent grappling though very strong in the clinch good knees where's you at when he's able to take you down he's very strong on top very heavy he's able to find submissions arm triangle chokes and whatnot spivak is dangerous on the ground excellent jiu-jitsu i'm on the feet he's not very polished he can box he does throw nice combinations however he doesn't really have too much power and his defense is probably his weak point very little head movement largely consists of him leaning back which is a very amateurish move unless you're someone like israel where you pull back and counter like it's a different story clearly a much stronger grappler then he is a striker he's gonna try to look to take down uh, Greg Hardy you know Hardy's a very hard hitter you have to understand he's only been in the sport for four or five years you know in his 30s as well so he's a very much a late starter and he's done much better than we expected you know he kind of earned his way through the division as well fighting lower rank guys moving up he's got that natural power you saw him rock tied to Ivasa before he got knocked out you know Greg he's just plagued by inexperience very very green and that's something that you just have to work your way through by fighting more by learning more you can beat certain guys like Maurice Green but lose to the more technical guy 
guys like Majin Tabora. He's more of a striker than anything. He's got no grappling, no wrestling, terrible takedown defense, no jiu-jitsu whatsoever. If he's off his back, he doesn't know what to do. He's absolutely a fish out of water. Against Spivak, he's going to look to knock him out, as he always does. He has a nice little jab that he's been developing. Very consistent, pouring jab that disrupts his opponents. He's going to want to do that against Spivak. He's got a nice straight right to the body. Really, really needs to refine his technique and his fundamentals. When he throws that straight right, his leg kind of leaves the ground. So you can tell he's not very comfortable in those spaces. I noticed when guys start attacking him on the feet, overreacts hard at their shots. He's just not composed. And that just comes with experience. He's going to try to knock Spivak here. Try to get him out of there on the feet. Even if he gets hurt, he's going to use his grappling to take him down. More avenues to survive and more avenues to get a finish here as well. I think Spivak will eventually take him down, control him. Exercise that huge discrepancy in grappling skill. Be very heavy on top. Wear him out. Greg's going to turn his back and, and do whatever it takes to get up, but he'll give up his neck by mistake. So Spivak will lock in a rear naked choke. Moving on, we got Kevin Holland versus Alex Oliveira. This is Holland's welterweight debut, you know, cutting down. He's always been a skinny guy, even for the middleweight division. You know, I know he's tall, long rangey, 6'4", but... He says he floats around around 190, which is very, very light for a middleweight. This move down could be the right thing. And if he was to contend for the title in the middleweight division, he'd have to get a 5-6 win streak for us to really believe that he has a chance. I think moving down is the best move. You know, I think it's, it's perfect timing as well against a guy like Alex Oliveira, who is one of the older guys in the division on his way out. He has had a lot of success in the past, both at lightweight and welterweight, you know, knocking guys out. He's a very wild striker, unorthodox, hands low, throws with a lot of heat. He's incredibly athletic. He's definitely more athletic than Kevin Holland, but not as technical from a kicking. I think Holland will take advantage of his tick kicks, his round kicks, his diversity on the feet. Oliveira might pose a threat with his calf kicks. He's got very heavy low kicks. Obviously, Holland being that tall, he's got very thin calves. So you know, if Oliveira just batters that leg over and over outside and inside, it can really slow down the mobility of Holland, a guy who really relies on his lateral movement. I think Holland will try to impose his size advantage, his height and length advantage, fight on the outside. But at the same time, Oliveira's wildness and his dynamism is going to be a threat. And Holland's going to realize, look, every single second I'm on the feet, although I'm the better guy, Guy. I'm taking a big risk here. Kevin Holland's got great body locks and takedowns. He's a very underrated defensive wrestler, and once he gets you down, he's good on top as well. You know, Oliveira hasn't shown very good submission defense. Kevin Holland will take advantage of that. Um, he uses long, lanky, rangy limbs to secure a tight triangle. We get him out of that, man. I think Kevin Holland gets a submission here. Moving on, we've got Edson Barboza versus Bryce Mitchell. It's always a pleasure and an absolute delight to watch Barboza fight, man. This guy is a legend. He's been in the division for a long time, fought the best. He's welcoming Bryce Mitchell to the ranks, to the higher level guys, and the perfect test for Bryce. You've never fought a guy with this level of striking. He beat Andre Philly, which is very promising, but Philly is nowhere near as dangerous as Barboza, and he doesn't have the feints and versatility on the feet. You know, I think Edson's going to try to defend all takedowns and keep it on the feet, keep it in his comfort zone, and just pick Bryce Mitchell apart from the outside. The sheer threat of that takedown, though, is going to shell up Barboza. He's going to be selective with the way that he throws his kicks, making sure that he doesn't push with him, making sure that he whips him and gets him in and out quickly, rather than getting caught, and Bryce Mitchell takes him down. The thing about Bryce is that he's so technically sound. Ground, he will circle you out, he'll cut angles use different body mechanics to get you down with technique and not so much strength you know Bryce isn't the most athletically gifted guy but the fact that he's so imposing on the ground it opens up his stand-up makes him very creative on the feet he throws spinning kicks he throws all this random stuff that most other guys can't get away with just for the sheer fact that he can back it up with his grappling so I think he's actually going to try to open up on Barboza throw some wild stuff that's going to welcome Barboza to you know throw some wild stuff back and once he does that throws a spinning heel kick or anything like that Bryce is going to time him take him down control him from top I know that Edson has X excellent takedown defense and I do believe he will defend numerous takedowns from Bryce but the likelihood of him defending every single takedown in a 15 minute duration is very low I do believe Bryce has what it takes to eventually get him down and once he gets him down he's very good in tough control uses his legs very well to spread the base of his opponent get rid of all of their leverage I think Bryce will just get him down do what he does best you know soften up his opponent wear him out make it a war of attrition he'll look for submissions but I don't think he'll get him Barboza's got pretty good submission defense very resilient as well also the size advantage of Barboza will help him thwart a lot of Mitchell's attack although I think Bryce will probably get one or two takedowns that will be enough for him to get a W here just with a long control time the submission attempts that will basically be an imprint in the judges mind so I, I got Bryce Mitchell winning by unanimous decision moving on to the co-main event we've got a five rounder Rafael dos Santos versus Rafael Faziv both of these gentlemen were supposed to headline the Jamal Hill uh, Johnny Walker card but Faziv had some visa issues so now they're fighting this weekend now dos Santos has a massive massive experience advantage having fought the past the present and now the future he beat a prime pettis prime dos Santos was an animal like no other he was a dangerous foe so strong on the feet so good with the wrestling excellent jiu-jitsu his control was amazing and his conditioning and cardio was something like you've never seen before prime dos Santos would definitely give faziv a lot of issues but we have to admit that dos Santos is on his way out although he has having success against the likes of paul felder and whatnot he's not the same guy i don't see that tenacity i don't see that conditioning i don't see the the guy 
guy who's literally out there to rip your fucking head off. Dosanjo's is out here to win now. And I understand that. It's all about getting that paycheck. But as far as getting finishes and looking for highlight real knockouts, I'm not seeing it anymore. Now against Rafael Fazeev, he's going to have to be very, very careful because Fazeev is a world-class kickboxer, excellent Muay Thai, and he grew up with that discipline. So he's incredibly refined in that area. Everything he throws, doesn't matter how fatigued he is. Picture perfect technique, fundamentally sound, and very, very fast and athletic. I think Fazeev will use his lateral movement, the way he bounces left and right, to disrupt Rafael's rhythm. Rafael is a straight-up standard Muay Thai fighter. He'll be flat-footed, wait for you, and then he'll explode. Explode. but when you got a guy like Fazeev he's constantly readjusting constantly cutting off angles to restart the channel of attack it's gonna disrupt Asanjo's 100% every time he feels like proper distance to throw Hafia will adjust constantly so I think Fazeev will pose a lot of threats on the feet just being the better striker I think Asanjo's will need to grapple to have any chance in this fight 100% and he'll have to exercise his championship caliber experience if he's able to take Fazeev into the championship rounds the fourth and fifth double leg him control him wear him out against the cage knee him up and use his superior conditioning to win this fight because we did see Fazeev get tired against Bobby Green in the third round. However, like I said in the tape study, Bobby Green's style is incredibly stressful mentally because you're having to deal with a guy who throws punches from the waist. Although he's athletic and very gifted on the feet, he's straight up and down. He's exactly the style that Hafeel is, is used to facing in Tiger Muay Thai. Just another Muay Thai guy. So Hafeel is going to beat him to the punch, hurt him on the feet. Dasanjo is going to shoot for doubles and try to grapple him. May press him against the cage and land some knees, but I don't think he'll have enough control time. I don't think he'll be able to take Hafeel down and drown him. I think Fazeev's improved a lot with his takedown defense. He'll do enough work on the feet, have enough moments and appealing combinations to where the judges just go, look, he's done more. He's done more damage. And although Hafel might have more control time, he's not getting effective shots off. So I got Hafel Fazeev by unanimous decision. Moving on to the main event, Colby Covington versus Jorge Masvidal, absolute grudge match. Former best friends, you know, former training partners came out together in the ranks, cornered each other. You know, I don't know if this is fabricated or if it's real, but either way, they're selling it very, very well. This is a straight up grappler versus striker matchup. You know, Covington is excellent. Excellent D1 wrestler, good double legs. He's able to constantly take you down. He's got some of the best conditioning, if not the best cardio in the division period. He's kind of like a mini Kane Velasquez. Just keeps going, keeps going. And although his strike is not as imposing, just throwing like kind of pilly pity patter, pilly punches, it's so disrupting and tiring to deal with a guy who just doesn't take breaks. Those punches get more and more damaging the more fatigued you get. It's easy to get knocked out when you're tired. He's not going to allow Jorge Masvidal to breathe in this fight, I don't believe. You look at Masvidal's style, he requires kicking distance. He fights at a slower tempo. He's got excellent technique on the feet. You know, Masvidal has had a huge resurgence in his career. Uh, 2019, he had that highlight reel viral flying knee knockout over Ben Askren. Turned him into a superstar overnight. Not only his fighting style, but his charisma, demeanor, and just the way he carries himself. It's very polarizing for the fans to watch. And, you know, he's a fun fighter. He's on a downslide right now. You know, two losses in a row against Usman. Didn't really have that good of a showing. You know, he got out-wrestled the first fight. He got out striked the second fight. And he didn't have anything for Usman. You know, Colby Covington is coming off two losses against Usman as well. But he was much more competitive. He rocked Usman been a couple times so although he's been you know won the fights with control not just a better overall work on the feet Covington showed that look he's right up there he's very very close to being the champion he's just can't beat Kamaru Usman. Masvidal is a decent grappler in his own right he might not be shooting for doubles or anything like that but he's got a very good takedown defense good base very good reaction speed and obviously training with Colby on his way up really refined that part of his game you know it's very hard to take him down but Colby was the guy who helped him in that area which Mentally, it's, it's tough to deal with because it's like, fuck, I might be a good defensive grappler, but Colby told me it and I'm about to fight him. So he knows the weaknesses of Masvidal's grappling. He knows where to take him down. And Kamaru Usman kind of displayed that in both fights as well. You know, you look at Jorge's show dog, losses to Usman, Maya, Benson Henderson. He loses to a lot of grapplers. And although he has had wins over Michael Chiesa and Ben Askren, Chiesa was very early on in his career and Askren didn't really get an opportunity to grapple. Unless Masvidal was able to finish Covington very, very quickly, he's going to have to answer to that, man, because Covington was the one who basically taught him resiliency in the grapple exchanges. When it comes to the feet, I favor Masvidal power speed overall awareness and reaction speed but at the same time the longer this fight goes the more he gets tired Covington's gonna start landing on him man guaranteed just the sheer amount of combinations that he's throwing in, in a successive fashion is gonna wear out on Masvidal's body and his mind when you're facing an avalanche like Covington and although he doesn't hurt he's not very powerful in your face touching you constantly you can't breathe man as you're worried about that volume upstairs that's when he level changes and takes you down i think he will eventually take jorge down when you have footage on youtube of colby Covington out wrestling masvidal for an hour straight it's tough for me to think that masvidal has made enough adjustments or has improved enough to avoid that level of demise
times. You know, I think Covington is the significantly better grappler. No real argument there. And he will exercise it if he has problems on the feet. He knows he can outlast Masvidal. So why not just do it in the real scene? I think that's what Covington's gonna do, man. He's gonna have probably a little bit of trouble in the first round dealing with the speed of Masvidal on the feet, but it'll keep level changing, keep mixing up the takedowns. And even if he can't take Masvidal down early on, it will fatigue Masvidal's shoulders. Blood will start filling up there. He'll start being more and more slow. Covington will pick up the pace as the rounds go on and he will just take over. You know, I genuinely believe that this is going all five rounds and I do believe Covington's output, volume, takedown versatility will be a huge contributing factor to this win. I think he will get a 50-45, 49-46 type victory. Not going to be competitive. You might hear some boos here, but at the end of the day, Covington is currently the better five. So I'm going with Colvin Covington by unanimous decision. Moving on to the betting tips. Um, I can't give you any betting tips this week. Like I said, if I get two losses back to back, I'm not within my rights to give anyone advice at the moment. Take that as you will. Make the best that you want. I'm skipping this week because I need to really reconsider my game plan. I'm going to have mental bets in my head. And if I get most of them right, I'll be back. I appreciate you guys, man. Follow my Twitter and uh, join the crew. It's like a little community. Watch the tape studies, watch the watch parties. I'm kind of putting myself in the doghouse right now, man. I really need to do my study. You know, I know I don't have much time with work really ramping up for me. In those weeks where I'm fatigued and I don't have a moment for myself to break down the fights, I need to just take a back seat and go, look, I, I didn't do enough study. And I can't bet. And that's okay. You don't have to bet on every single fucking event. You bet on the events that you're confident in. Yeah, I mean, enough about that. I'll see you guys next time. Gamble safely, responsibly, and uh, enjoy your families. Oh,